just crying out for help right now, Father. Father, just reach out and just touch their hearts right now, touch their minds and touch their souls right now, Father. Father, let them just be able to see that light at the end of that tunnel right now, Father. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it can just look dark sometimes and we just see there's no way out right now, Father. My Father, let us just know that when we have hope in you right now, Father, there's hope for anything right now, Father. Father, we ask for a blessing upon this service right now, Father. We just ask to lift it up on high right now, Father. Let us just come to you just sincerely and wholeheartedly right now, Father, just to praise you right now, Father. Father, this isn't a dead time right now, Father. We should be alive and we should be great and we should just be happy that you are our Savior right now, Father. You are our God right now, Father. You've just brought us from a mighty long way right now, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just ask for a blessing upon this man of God who's going to bring the word today right now, Father. Bless him, speak to him, and speak through him right now, Father. Just use him as your vessel right now, Father. Just to preach your word to a dying world right now, Father. Father, we just thank you right now because we can't thank you enough. These are the blessings of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give honor to God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the company and Holy Spirit. It is good to be at First Baptist on this fourth Sunday in September. Amen. 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 In the absence of our pastor, we just want to say you are welcome, welcome, and welcome. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask Minister Mathis to come with prayer and Minister Hopkins to come with scripture. Good morning. Let us pray. Good morning, Father. Good morning. Oh, sovereign God, yes. Redeemer, yes. Comforter, and our friend. Yes. We thank you this morning, Lord, that you have allowed us to come out to your house of worship to serve you and honor you, Lord. Yes. Lord, we ask that you would allow your presence to consume us like fire, yes. that we may be saved, healed, and delivered here yes, today. Lord. And Father, that we may take what you give us out into your yes. world, and that your people that are suffering and hungry for you, that we'll be the vessels that you would use to help them to find you, Lord. Yes. Lord, we thank you for Minister Gladman this morning. We pray that you pour out your anointing on the Lord, and that he may feed here today, and that we may have open minds and open hearts to receive and penetrate, Lord, so that we will get something from this table that you have set. Lord, we thank you for this church that you have allowed us to come to this morning, that are open doors and friendliness and love that we receive when we come here, Father. And we thank you for our pastor that's in his absence. We praise you and we thank you so much for this day again. We honor you and we lift you up this day and forevermore. Amen. Good morning, First Baptist. Good morning. I'll be reading in your hearing this morning, Daniel 3, from the NIV version, uh, 8 through 12. And this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, lyric, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews who you have set over the affairs of the prominence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They never serve your gods, nor worship the image of gold you have set. Amen. 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 Thank you, Minister Mathis and Minister Hopkins. Let us wave at one another. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as our music minister comes forward.
Amen. Our ministers for being here this morning. Amen. Our beautiful mothers. Amen. Our deacons too. Amen. 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 Our beautiful ushers. Amen. Minister, Minister Mitzi and Ray on the drums. And you, God's children, thank you for being here this morning. Amen. 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 And the word is coming by Minister Brandon Gladman. He is one of our own. He can teach and he can preach. Amen. So I want you to say, Minister Gladman, Gladman. preach the word. Preach the word. Amen. Than it worked to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were his army to bind the 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the midst of the fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their holes in their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire flew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. 25 says, He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of Man. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, you understand that Nebuchadnezzar had built himself a golden image and called all the important folks from across the land in an effort to dedicate this very image that he had made. Some would say King Nebuchadnezzar was full of himself. I would believe that he was feeling good about what he had accomplished. Everything was going well. Everything was going his way. So what does he do? He decides to issue a decree which was very simply, when the music came on, you bowed down to his image. See, I don't know about you this morning, but I have a very, a very big issue with someone having that much control over my life and well-being, and they ain't God. That sounds to me to be like a dictatorship. And then it gets worse. You mean tell me if I don't bow down, you're going to throw me that, that same hour, not two days later, but that very same hour, into a fiery furnace? I certainly don't like those odds. So I want to talk to you this morning from this thought, this subject, to whom shall I turn? Amen. To whom shall I turn? Amen. Well, preacher, what do you mean when you say, to whom shall I turn? Amen. Very simply, it means to seek out or to look to. Yes, For example, when your car breaks down, breaks down you turn to a mechanic. Amen. When you're sick, you turn to a doctor. Amen. When you're hungry, you turn to the grocery store or a restaurant. When you have a bill to pay, you turn to your bank account. Why? Because you have the expectation that by turning, to, turning or going through these things, the need will be fulfilled or met. Now understand that given the world in which we live in now, everything is seemingly available to us almost instantaneously. Technology is everywhere around us. Good and evil is present on every hand. People are coming and people are going. People are well and people are hurting. We know right now that price on everything seems, under the sun seems to be rising and while the return value for those very things seems to be very small. You pay a lot, get a little. I said your job might be acting crazy. Children may not be acting right. Your money is a little funny, your change is a little bit strange. Your backs are against the wall. But we feel as though we're at our wit's end. I dare say that some of us in our lives have found ourselves faced with a tough situation or a set of circumstances in which we find it to be unfavorable or we have no idea of how it's going to play out. We tend to focus our attention on what's going on around us and with us. We are for all intents and purposes perplexed and dismayed. Sometimes we feel defeated and discouraged. Beat down and at our breaking point. We begin to sweat the matter and sometimes we resort to unsavory methods to alleviate our distresses. We've tried this and we've tried that. Yet we found no relief. We want to throw in the towel, we want to call it quits because it appears to be too hard. We are very much standing before our very own unique fiery furnace. All of our circumstances and all of our situations seemingly have brought us to this point. The heat is very much on. And we are now bound by circumstances with seemingly no way out and no end result. You see, we're quick to turn to whomever comes running and whatever is available, either the chance or even a sliver of hope that the situation will improve. Some have turned to drugs with no improvement. Some even turn to alcohol with no improvement. Some have turned to illegal activity and yet still no improvement. Some have turned to other illicit means and still yet have no improvement. Some have flat out destroyed their lives and in the process destroyed their very soul and still they're no better than when they started off. But you say, you say, preacher, I hear you well. I hear you saying what you're saying. But you don't understand my life, preacher. With all that I have going on. Here I am sitting in front of the fiery furnace. You don't understand what I have going on. I'm up to my neck in debt. And here I am hurting daily. But you say, 
that God can do this and God can do that. But you don't understand my life, preacher. You don't understand my situation or the hell that I'm catching. It seems like every time I turn around, something else is happening. Seems like yet, here I am standing in front of the fiery furnace. It might be easy for you to say and to do just that and trust God because you're a preacher. You say to yourself, I can't understand or comprehend why I'm going through what I'm going through. How do you expect me to get through this day? How do you expect me to get through this situation? And all I see is what I have going on in front of me. It doesn't look good at all. You're fine because you're a preacher. You've been in church for 15, 20, 30 years. So you've got to be exempt from these issues. Can I share something with y'all real quick? Preachers and church folk are human too. We hurt just like everybody else. We have fault just like everybody else. We are not exempt from problems and such and But when we look to the hills, we'll come up our hill. I have a feeling that everything is going to be just fine. Storm clouds may rise, but I'm going to be just fine. Friends may walk away, but I'm going to be just fine. People come and people go, but I'm going to be just fine. See, I understand that sometimes the positions in which we find ourselves may not be what we would like to be, or it may not be favorable to us, or it may not be on our terms, but I must caution you this morning about those that you may decide to turn to. You see, the old adage states that everything that glitters is not gold. If it sounds too good to be true, then nine times out of ten it usually is. So, preacher, what can you tell us about those who we should turn to? What is specifically about those that we must watch out for? What is it that is that we should do when we find ourselves before our very own fiery furnace? First of all, you gotta be careful who you confide in. You gotta understand you here. Understand that everybody does not need to know what you got going on. You can't tell everybody everything to everybody. You wonder why your business comes from one end of games due to the other? Can I help you out? Your business traveling across town because you put it out there. You tell your so-called friend, your so-called boys and girls, and they go all across town. Stop telling everybody your business. Stop telling everybody your next move. You wonder why you find yourself always in second place. Stop giving folks the ammunition. You can't trust everybody. Tell the wrong person and watch your business get circulated more than a dollar bill. My brothers and sisters, not only must we be careful in who we confide in, but secondly, we must understand that everybody is not on our side. Yeah. I hate to break it to you. You thought that they were your friend on your pew with you, but I hate to break it to you. Everybody's not your friend. Yeah. Everybody that hugs you don't love you. Yeah. Everybody is not on your side. Yeah. Not everybody is genuine on your side and concerned about your welfare. Yeah. You see, there are those that are among you and around you that are plotting your downfall and destruction. Yeah. Y'all better hear me this morning. They smile in your face, but yet they stab you in the back. Yes. You're not understanding me. I said they'll throw the rock and hide their hand. Wow. Some folks are very good manipulators. They will whine and dine you. Use you up and drop you like a bad habit. Wow. Y'all better hear me this morning. You can't let everybody in your circle. You wonder why it seems like you're having to continue to hit reset? Check your circle. Keep messy folk away from you in your life. I better just say that again. Keep messy folk away from you and out of your life. The very folks that are supposed to be on your side, work alongside you, the very ones that will throw you under the bus and sell you out. You don't believe this in the word of God. Verse number 12 says, There were certain Jews that thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and these men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Somebody say snitches. Yeah. If they were doing what Nebuchadnezzar had commanded them to do, how they got time to figure out what else was doing? The very folk that's supposed to be on your team. The very folk. The ones you see every Sunday. The ones you love and greet and shake their hand every Sunday. Sing in the choir with. Share the pulpit with. The very folk will be the very ones that stab you in the back. You better watch your back. Amen. Thirdly, everybody's not interested in your welfare. Yes, Lord. Amen. See, I alluded to this a little bit ago, but not everyone's really concerned about you and your situation. Sure. Do you know that there are folk whose sole purpose in life in their life means to destroy your life? They are very well stand by and watch you be thrown into the fiery furnace as opposed to lending you a helping hand. They will sell you out in a heartbeat, especially if it means them getting ahead of you. They don't care about you. 
They don't care about what you got going on. They care enough to get the information that you're going to give them and run and tell that. Yeah. Fourthly, you can't trust everybody. You can recall the woman with the issue of blood, spend all she had, going from doctor to doctor, trusting and hoping that her condition would be made better. But then came in contact with the one who was able to make a difference in her life. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garments, I shall be made whole. Come here, Daniel. Daniel knew he did not trust King Darius when the decree was made to cease all praying. But Daniel knew the source of his strength and prayed anyway. Y'all gonna pray with me this morning? Even when he was conf confronted with and, with and thrown into the lion's den, he still knew who he could trust. Job phrased it this way, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I don't know where you find yourself at this morning, but I want to let you know that you and I cannot and should not trust everybody. When, Shaq, when, when all individuals show you, when individual shows you who they are the very first time, my angel said, you better believe what they're doing. Okay. Shaq, not you Shaq, a minute ago, told Nebuchadnezzar that they were not careful to answer him in this matter. Yeah. For they knew that their God is able. They went a little further and said that even if he was not, did not deliver them, they knew that he was still able. Yes, but put your trust in a secure source. Yeah. Build your foundation on a strong foundation. Amen. Secure your trust in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So preacher, if I should be mindful of all these things regarding trusting certain people and turning certain people, then the question still exists and must be posed again, to whom shall I turn? All right. When I find myself lost and alone, to whom shall I turn? Oh, I want to encourage you to turn to the one yeah. who's able. Right. Turn to the one who won't let you fall. Yeah. Turn to the one who will lead you and guide you. Yeah. Turn to the one who won't leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. I'm through. You gotta turn to the one that if you allow him to, He'll show himself mighty and strong. Yeah. Turn to the one who came down from glory. Yeah. Turn to the one who came down from 42 long generations. To yeah. so whom shall I turn? Yeah. Turn to the one that walked this earth for 33 long years. Yeah. Turn to the one who fed those that were hungry. Yeah. Turn to the one that opened the eyes of those that were blind. Yeah. God, I hear you this morning. Turn to the one who made the lame to walk and the deaf to talk. Can I get a witness here? Turn to the one who opened the mute mouth of those who were mute and was able to form and speak words. Turn to the one who healed those that were sick and raised those that were dead. The same one who people got tired of and wanted to get rid of. The same one who would stick closer than any friend or any brother. The same one who marks the marching judgment hall the judgment hall. I said the same one who had placed the cross on his back and walked him up a hill called Calvary. The same one who they laid down on that very same cross. The same one that they nailed, nailed in his hand. The same one that put nails and spikes in his feet. The same one they stretched high and stretched wide. The same one that put the crown on the body's head and pierced it in his side. Down the front of the The same one whose blood came streaming down for the mission of our sins. The same one who suffered the punishment of our sins so that you and I can experience forgiveness and peace. The same one that because of his suffering, we can be healed from our wounds of our sins. The same one who hung his head and locked him in his shoulders, and the old people say he hung his head and he died. He died from the sixth to the ninth hour. Gave up the ghost. Took him down, put him in a bar to him. Stayed in the grave all day Friday, all day Friday night. Stayed there all day Saturday, all day Saturday night. Got up early when Sunday morning. I said early when Sunday morning. Not 
try, but have you tried it for yourself? Can you testify to what God has done for you? God is not and should not be our last resort. Surround yourself with like-minded folk. Because understand that man and things are fallible, but God is infallible. There is nothing too hard for our God. It does not matter what the situation is, how impossible or how impassable it may appear. When all else fails, I can go to the rock that is higher than I. Your hand to the minister and your heart to 